another Austin taco. The, the, the veil has been lifted. The layer of illusion has been removed from my taco history. <laughs> and now I will complain that I can't get a taco like it was there. And here's the thing. There was a difference in the tortilla. It was corn, but it was like fluffy. It had like a toe, it was like pliable and soft, and it was just one tortilla. You get corn tortillas in Austin, they double them up because they crack. Because they're yeah. terrible. Because they're, he says they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know exactly what they're doing, but there was a Mexican lady in that kitchen I wanted to go make out with. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> Whatever it was, and I was like, thank you, Grandma. <laughs> All right, which leads us to, we're talking about marketing. And here's the thing, when it comes to social media marketing, you might as well just remove this portion. Because here's what Mark Zuckerberg did. He managed to convince you that Facebook is a platform for you to share photos of your cat while on the sidebar or in video form they advertise cat food because it is a marketing platform and it is a gold mine. Okay? How many of you use social media with any regularity? Now, how many of you use it for business? Oh, that's okay. The percentage has dropped a little bit, but not too bad. When you guys post stuff for business, what do you post? I post announcements of events or things on my schedule. Now, so, like, if you have an opening on a Thursday, you, you post to Facebook and just let people know when the openings are? Mm -hmm. that's, I think that's an excellent way to use it because it's so quick. Right? I, try to put up something relevant and interesting, either it's food related, something that I've tried out on myself, or I'm doing like a trade with somebody and we were fooling around and decide to capture the moment, like yeah. we're doing cupping with movement, you know, check this out. Is it a video? Uh, it's, I haven't done video yet, but like okay. boomerang is fun. I mean, just things that are yeah. quick and easy. So you don't have to listen to like even right now, I have a video camera recording this because this will wind up on YouTube. And then I have Facebook Live going that's streaming out to planet Earth. And massage therapists are telling me they're having trouble with marketing. That smartphone is the most powerful communication device ever invented in human history. I wish we could dig, dig up Einstein and Ben Franklin and say, hey man, here's a smartphone. What can you do with Twitter? Okay. Uh-huh. It's like, what kind of protest could Martin Luther King Jr. have organized if he'd had Twitter? Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Like, there's immense power there, but primarily it's used for marketing. And that's what I think the platforms are, because even though we treat it like it's a public utility, it's not. It's actually an advertising platform. I think they've done research studies, and based on the way things are set up, if everybody on Earth gave Facebook $12, they could basically remove all the ads because that's what their company is worth. But people choose not to do that, so they put ads, just like you do with everything else, like on TV. So when you watch The Late Show with so-and-so, who's, who's doing The Late Show now? Stephen Colbert. Okay, it wasn't sure. If you're watching The Late Show, it's paid for by the ads. The same thing happens with Facebook. Those Facebook ads are people that are paying for that content, right? Because we're not paying to access. Facebook changed their algorithm so that it's basically pay to play. What I can tell you is the trickle, that drop that comes through your feed is what you see as your social media feed. That is not what the potential is there for Facebook if you can pay for ads because they're making you pay for the pipeline. If you use Facebook to advertise, we're on Facebook Live. Facebook is allowing more people who follow me on my business page to see this video. And the reason they're allowing that even organically without me boosting this post is because Mark Zuckerberg wants to make sure that people watch this video and stay on Facebook longer because it's a video, because they're waiting to see what happens next. And then if you run an ad through Facebook, they're charging you less for an ad that has a video because they're trying to keep people on their platform. Mm -hmm. Twitter, per, I mean not Twitter, uh, Facebook purchased Instagram. Now there's Instagram Live. Now there's Instagram ads. Twitter for a while was running Periscope. Now it's Twitter Live. Do you see a theme mm -hmm. for live broadcasting? YouTube basically has some of the same functionality now. YouTube is owned by Google. 
I usually tell students to make YouTube videos. The reason I tell them to make YouTube videos is because those YouTube videos link up to search engine optimization. So if you want to focus on carpal tunnel and you want to work on tar carpal tunnel clients, you need to make 20 YouTube videos related to carpal tunnel on your website that you write a blog post for that you embed on your blog post because now you are an expert because you made a YouTube video. I have seen it again and again. And if you're a massage therapist, if you have two massage places, the consumer has two choices. Are they going to choose the place with videos or without videos? With online scheduling or without online scheduling? I think online scheduling in the last 20 years has been like the biggest innovation in our industry. I think online scheduling changed like things very radically because clients used to have to be able to contact me and I was spending time like texting and couldn't figure out the schedule. Online scheduling allowed them to look at my calendar, look at their calendar, she's nodding, and they could just pick their spot. It felt more professional. My website started to function as my front desk, which, did, which is why I didn't care about my yard, because they'd already scheduled. <laughs> By the time they made it to my house, they're like, well, I gotta go in. You know. oh, the grass is tall. <laughs> so what I would encourage you to do is to start to use social media more. I think that the marketing dollar, even for paid ads, is going that direction. Um, it's even moving away, I think, to a degree from Google Ads. Have, have any of you ever paid for Google Ads? I have. You, who, you said? Did, did it work? It did. Did? Did you just pick up clients? I picked up clients. How long ago was it? Six years ago. Six years ago? It was probably cheaper then than it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's multiple platforms to pay for ads, right? Because you could literally pay for like Twitter ads. I mean, I don't know what kind of retention you would get, but the thing is, there's ads on all these different platforms, so Google ads, YouTube ads, Facebook ads. It depends on who you're trying to reach out to. I'm a big fan and proponent of social media, and it's helped me educate people. I make tons of free content. There's only 200 YouTube videos on my channel. I've shot at least another 40, I think, with the Psychiatry's channel, and some of those get 100,000 views plus, because I'm trying to draw people into my audience. How many of you use Twitter with any regularity? I hate that. <laughs> which, which is, honestly, uh, six years ago, my wife kind of walked me through the same thing I'm discussing with you guys. When she got to Twitter, I said, wife, I love you. For, for the preservation of our marriage and my life, yeah. I'm going to go do yoga now so I can relax and breathe and calm down because I have no idea why a platform that only allows me 140 or so characters is something I need to use for business. Now people are getting angry at me because I give advice for free on a Facebook group I run called Massage Entrepreneurs where I'm teaching them how to use Facebook and I'm teaching them how to use social media and I'm dragging massage therapists in 2017 and they're actually questioning my ethics when it comes to social media because I encourage people to search with hashtags. If you want to work on CrossFitters and you search CrossFit Austin Injury, Boulder Bro. Rotator, Boulder Bro, I don't know, whatever, you have to search, right? If you search for three or four hashtags, you're funneling down to your potential target market. Now what happens if you follow all those folks and you interact with them and then you eventually send them a coupon as a direct message and say, hey man, I like to support people who are doing CrossFit, I'd love to work with you. Because that functionality is there. That piece of equipment allows you to shoot live video that streams to outer space. <laughs> <laughs> like people are gonna watch this and see me talking about it. And here's the thing, just because I shoot this Facebook Live and talk about social media marketing for massage therapists, what do other massage therapists think about my knowledge base on those platforms? Do they think I know what I'm talking about? Do they think I've established myself as an expert? Now what happens when you turn on Facebook Live and give people self-care tips for carpal tunnel? And the friend who follows you on Facebook 
sees that post, says, hey, my friend Carla has problems with carpal tunnel. Let me share. Hey, check this out. Now, who are they more likely to get a session with? I love social media that has almost no overhead. It's almost free, and I'm, I'm dying that massage therapists don't use it. Because we live in an industry and work in an industry, it's, our work is very personal. People have to like us. When I started my home studio, I was afraid that females, for instance, wouldn't want to come see me because I was a guy. I would get a female client, she would come in, I'd be working on her, and she'd say about halfway through the session, she's like, you know, I was worried when I made the appointment with you that you might have been like a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> and I just get, and I'm like, and I'm working on her, and I'm like, well, how did you figure out it wasn't a serial killer? And she's like, oh, I watched like 10 of your YouTube videos. Now, why did she watch 10 of my YouTube videos? And she said, anybody who made, you know, a serial killer is not going to spend time making 10 YouTube videos about <laughs> self-care really stuff. He's obviously a professional and cares about what he does. I created an emotional feeling in a potential client that got her over that boundary to come see me. What you wind up doing with social media is you're connecting with your audience, okay? I often compare what I do to some degree to the Grateful Dead. You guys know who the Grateful Dead is? Most people have a general awareness. The Grateful Dead are generally, in my opinion, considered one of the most hated bands in American history. And they're considered one of the most hated bands in American history because the Deadheads liked the Grateful Dead so much, they wouldn't listen to anything else. And it annoyed people. And what did Jerry Garcia think about that? Jerry Garcia was on heroin and he was cranking out another guitar solo and he could give a shit what you thought about <laughs> his hand. because he had a hundred thousand adoring fans who were pouring millions of dollars into his empire and he's like we're gonna party until I'm gone and that's what he did. I think they made a, a fundamental impact on the American landscape of music but the thing is people don't like them. But what they did is they funneled down to their target audience, which is what I'm trying to do. I don't expect the mainline massage industry to think I'm the biggest, baddest thing that's ever hit the industry. In fact, if I don't have a percentage of haters who basically loathe everything I'm doing, I haven't won. Because I haven't found my fans. Because who likes P. Diddy? <laughs> or whatever rapper, whatever rapper is your favorite. You know, does everybody like Eminem? <laughs> but the thing is, does Eminem care that you don't like his music? No. 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 See, and that's the thing. Like, being liked by everybody is not something I aspire to. In fact, I consider that a failure. Some of my heroes, Socrates and Jesus, we know how they wound up. I answer questions with a question that pisses a lot of people off. I was a philosophy student. Blame it on my upbringing and whatever's going on in my cerebral cortex, okay? My corpus callosum, there's a lot of information flow going across both channels. You can use a nearly free tool to build your business. And here's what I see. Social media, in particularly, is democratizing the marketplace because it's allowing somebody like me to compete with Massage Envy. Because here's what Massage Envy isn't gonna do they're not really going to embrace what social media can do. I am putting out a free video stream to anybody who wants to view it and building fans because I'm giving them information about how to use Twitter hashtags to draw clients. You can do the same, but you do it as a massage therapist depending on what your target market is. What's your target market, Michael? Money. Yeah. And here's the thing, if you don't have a target market, it's hard to draw those CrossFitters. Because here's the thing, when you draw CrossFitters, and I use them specifically because one, they have money. Two, I believe they have injuries. Have you noticed a certain correlation between <laughs> the Boulder Bros? And Exactly, and the thing is, when I put up this video and link it from my YouTube and hashtag CrossFit, a CrossFitter gets to see this video, and they decide whether they like my, my stuff or not. They can decide to follow me. They check out my other YouTube videos and go, whoa, he showed me how to work on my rotator cuff. I injured that when I was doing this or that. Make sense? 
I'm using this technology just to push the pedal down to the floor to be able to access people. I don't care that I get called Porky Pig in YouTube videos on the Psyche Truth channel. I check out those people's profiles. There's nothing there. It's like the bathroom wall of the internet. I'm like, if you don't have haters, you don't have game, okay? They don't criticize my bodywork technique because people regularly watch the videos and they're freaking out. They're like, what the hell is he doing? We've never seen anybody do that. And I go, welcome. Welcome to my world. Because I kept pushing the edges, right? But I'm also pushing the edges when it comes to marketing and annoying massage therapists who don't want to use social media. Now here's one of the challenges I see with massage. Can you, working at a facility, take out your cell phone and Facebook Live your massage? No. <laughs> Can I? Yeah. And here's what may happen. I may eventually set up my camera and literally just record entire sessions and upload it because my clients are clothed. Because a clothed client isn't a disadvantage, it's an advantage. And if that client is okay with it and it's between me and them, I can Facebook Live it or record it and upload it. I can allow people to see me work. Now, am I afraid about people uh, taking techniques? Technique, technique, technique. No. You mean I put up something for free that helped you? So here's the thing, I produce workbooks, videos, DVDs, I talk to the people who help me with that stuff and stream it out, because it's digital, right? Anybody on earth can get that. They are worried that people are gonna torrent that. And I'm like, why? Like, listen, I have copyright on it because I wrote it, but the thing is, if they're gonna put that on the Pirate Bay and turn me into the Metallica of body workers, I won. I won, because I'll be traveling to Europe and Australia soon. It doesn't matter. It's not about control, it's about maintaining intellectual property and building with the power of the World Wide Web. And you have access to this. People 20 years ago did not. Not in any way, shape, or form the same thing. And this continues to alter, it continues to change, it gets more complex. It's increasingly video-based. Any of you use Snapchat? Michael, see, he's having an anxiety attack over here. He's like, oh, God, we're going to talk about Snapchat. It's over. I'm done. Ugh. First time I saw Snapchat mentioned on a massage therapist platform, they said, no, absolutely not. Snapchat is a horrible platform to advertise massage. And I was like, why? You know, like, people just, they send naked photos with that. I'm like, it's the internet. You know that like 50% plus of the internet is porn, folks, like traffic worldwide, right? The internet. If people are going to use a tool for whatever they're going to use it for. It's a perfectly legitimate tool. It just depends on how what you use it for and what you choose to do with it. I use Snapchat to promote my business. Today, I took pictures of my tacos at lunch. Hashtag El Pastor. Hashtag tacos, I was on in, at Instagram, tagged the restaurant that advertises the restaurant. I took two photos in my garden, garden, hashtag lettuce, hashtag radish, hashtag <laughs> onion. And what happens? A local, a, a local, why did I say local? Like a small suburban farm in Sweden liked my post. Yeah. Somebody in Austin liked my taco post, right? Um, I hashtag Pitbull because my roommate's dog was sitting in the door and Blue's a little weird dog. And, and Blue was there and I took a quick photo of Blue and I posted it through Instagram, hashtag Pitbull. Somebody who likes Pitbulls who inserts that hashtag liked my page. I'm using stuff that doesn't even have to do with work to draw people into the fact that I like Topo Chico. I was in a class, I took a picture of my Topo Chico bottle, posted on Instagram, who liked my post, put Topo Chico. And what you're trying to do is get Topo Chico to share your post because you want Topo Chico's followers, 200,000 or whatever they are, to then see your post and like it and follow you. And that is what this allows. This allows connectivity that amazes me. And massage therapists talk all the time about being broke. I don't have any clients. I'm like, are you talking about what you do? And they're like, oh, I don't like Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> All of the platforms continue to evolve, they continue to change. What I'm trying to encourage you to do is think about how they're used, think about how you can access them, and think about the connectivity involved for you to be able to build your own brand. To be able to brand yourself. 
because I like to garden. I like Topo Chico. Um, I'll post a picture of my scotch or whiskey or whatever, and like whiskey distillery ads float through my feed because they can tell I'm hashtagging that, right? You're just trying to build a following. The organic following is cheap. When you're able to turn on ads, you get more. You get more follows, you get more likes, you get more shares. Your business page on Facebook, if you have 50 followers, what do consumers think of you? That you have 50 friends. What do they think if you have 1,000 followers? So if you were to get hit? What do you think if you have 200,000 followers? Pretty dope. What do you think about your YouTube content? You have 10 videos. You have 200 videos. Who do they trust more? When I started shooting video, it was with a flip cam that made worse video than what this Facebook live stream looks like. It was horrible. I lived in a house that had no air conditioning. I was doing Bikram yoga obsessively, and I wore nothing but a pair of black trunks in the yoga videos I shot. <laughs> Go, it's on my channel. I'll never erase it. 20 years from now, when I'm making millions of dollars a year, I want people to dig that up and play it in class and go, what was he thinking? And it's like, I didn't get it yet. Because it's an example of what a therapist can do. And here's the thing. Lady would come in and she'd go, well, she'd ask me a question and I'd answer her through YouTube comments. And she said, thanks, naked man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, naked man has become like a joke in our home where my wife will ta hashtag thanks naked man like if i make dinner or something she'll she'll you know post a photo of whatever and it's like thanks naked man <laughs> as a joke because you just learn to take the good with the bad you figure out what does your audience want i used to make content that was just for massage clients potential clients i'm now making content that also goes to massage therapists and students which leads me to massage entrepreneurs massage entrepreneurs is a facebook page i started because I didn't like the business information that I saw floating around on Facebook groups. It was old, it was dead, it was tired. They weren't discussing social media. They were using a social media platform to help massage therapists with business, but they weren't teaching massage therapists how to use the very platform they were on. I had gotten to the end of what the massage community would teach me, and I kept looking outside. And I was distilling that information through this group. We have almost 3,000 followers at this point. People hate me because of this, because I give them free content and information, and I'm not selling anything. Now, here's the thing. Why would I start a group to help massage therapists build their businesses? What's, what's my angle? What's my incentive to spend time and energy doing this and giving away free content? People will ask me questions and I will turn on my Facebook Live, answer their question in video format, and post it. Why would I do that? A rising tide elevates all ships. A rising tide elevates all ships. I like it. So here's the thing. What I figured out was if you were a struggling massage therapist and I said that my techniques are the latest, greatest, best, you were like, eh. Does every CE provider thinks that? But here's the thing. If I could give you free business advice, and give it to you straight, and you got clients, and your rebook rate went up, and you were making money, and you were making content, guess who you're more likely to listen to when my rebook class rolled through? Because I can give free business advice, and I've worked long enough where I had to figure it out and I had to struggle with that on my own, so I just walked students through that same process. That's the angle. It's a great group. I'll make sure you have an email uh, in the link uh, after this class. Did you guys have questions about social media? Because I went over briefly, just like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but do you have questions about how do you use it? How do you get followers? How do you interact with people? You know, what are best strategies, tips, techniques? Anything? What are all the uh, social medias that you use? Currently, the social media channels that I use are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Am I missing one? YouTube. Real quick, because yeah. Do you have the Instagram link on your website? Because I don't think I found it. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the website. Usually, it's linked on my emails. Oh. Yeah. So I'm pretty familiar with um, Facebook and Instagram and yeah. YouTube, but Twitter and Snapchat not so much. So kind of <coughs> walk me through. 
what you do on those that's unique to oh. the other platforms? Twitter, in an odd way, seems to hold like this huge potential, but in some ways it seems more challenging. The functionality with Twitter is it has an advantage because of hashtags. Hashtags are functions of searching. So if you decided that your target market, like what's your target market? Um, I like prenatal. Prenatal, okay, and that's like a perfect one because there's this niche, right? You'd have to look at other prenatal related things and figure out like mommy, you know, whatever hashtags they're using. And what you would be doing is, let's say you're in Austin, you want a client in Austin because it doesn't matter if they're in Nebraska necessarily. I mean, you could tolerate having a follower. Yeah, you could tolerate having a follower from Nebraska, but you can't give them a massage, right? The thing is, what you would probably do is search for those hashtags, try to find people in related industries, people that might be a referral source, people that you could trade a session with, maybe other massage therapists doing prenatal, and potential clients. Because if you're giving people free information and you're making YouTube content where you're talking about prenatal stuff, what you're doing is you're creating a stream of information that those people want to see so you start using the same hashtags because you're trying to get them to find you and you're trying to give them free information. I don't find it works as well to sell. Here, come on and buy, come on and buy, come on and buy, come on and buy. The focus on this is the first word is social. People get enough sales. What you're going to do is you're going to get a lot more sales. Did that cut off? Mm -hmm. What you're going to find is long term, you're going to get more sales if you can provide them free stuff, continue to provide them free stuff, and then eventually mention that you also have stuff for sale. That free time massage workbook has been downloaded well over probably 10,000 times. People come in periodically and buy some of my retail, and that's increasingly growing. But the main reason they buy is because I build a sense of trust because I gave them some free stuff. And I'm like, hey, you like the workbook? The videos follow it page by page. It's 40 bucks. How would you use Pinterest for social media marketing? Ooh, Pinterest is one I haven't really looked at. I, I can't really talk about Pinterest because I haven't used that one specifically. I think I set up a Pinterest account, but I never really used it. Did that answer your question about Twitter? Mm -hmm. I think as far as Pinterest goes, I've heard of people using it like, say, you have a blog or something like that, and then you pin your articles. Okay. You, you would use it a lot, a lot like Instagram, so you, okay. you capture a cool image, you maybe do a little caption, and it links to a video. Yeah. It links to your website, it links to content. Um, it's really like a collection, it's like a, um, a vision board, board, but then you, every image in the vision board links to something bigger. And then how do you get people to follow you on Pinterest? Can they search, is there a general? You can have a page and like, you can do ha you can do tags. It's not okay. hashtags, but it's by word tags. keyword okay. search. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say on Twitter, I hate Twitter just because I think it's boring. 120 characters <laughs> to say whatever, um, and usually it's not coherent. But you can link your Instagram to your Twitter, so okay. every time you Instagram, it automatically up to uploads. uploads to your yeah. Twitter, so you can at least have an image with content. Pinterest is one I can't talk about quite as effectively because I haven't really used it. Snapchat is the one that's been the most interesting to me because Snapchat is fun. Snapchat is fun that the, in a way that the other platforms just are not. And it's all video based and augmented reality. Guys, holy moly. I, I see where social media is going. And here's the thing. Mark Zuckerberg, along with Facebook, purchased Instagram. They tried to purchase Snapchat, and the guys from Snapchat wouldn't sell. So what Instagram is slowly doing, I'm on both of these platforms, is they are slowly changing Instagram to give it functionality that's more and more similar to Snapchat. Because they're trying to crush Snapchat. Now the thing is, Snapchat is really interesting because it's a little bit more challenging to follow people in some ways. If you look at my personal Facebook profile, it's the Snapchat logo because it's a QR code. I can pull that up visually on my camera, press a button, and it follows the person. So if you have a place, like you're gonna be at a, the spa, if you on your counter put that QR code for your spa and encourage those people to follow you, you can put up special deals, discounts, and information through your Snapchat account and they can follow you visually. You don't have to type anything in. They're like, do you use Snapchat? Yeah, hey, our QR codes are here, you can follow us. Our Snap code. Makes sense? It's a little bit more challenging because typing people's stuff in is kind of, I think, a little bit starting to fall out of favor with Snapchat because of that functionality. 
it remains to be seen what's going to happen to them long term because Facebook is trying to crush them. Snapchat is biggest with uh, millennials and younger, is what I'm told. The older generation hasn't picked it up as much. I, I post through it constantly. You guys have other social media related questions? Yeah, so, okay, it, so Snapchat is like your own little personal video feed. Yeah. That phone right there with the Snapchat, it's free, allows anybody who follows me to then allow me to put out content. I came here for, um, there was a, a job fair here at the school, and what I did was I parked my car over here. When I got out of my car, I got on Snapchat, and I said, hey, I'm going into Lauderstein Conway for the job fair. If you follow me, say hello and mention, I'll give you a 15% discount on any of my retail that you want. Nobody contacted me. That's so limited. Why? It's like limited edition. But if you build a fan base of really fervent followers who follow you on that channel, do you see how I can use that specific channel? Mm -hmm. Because increasingly when you talk about the different channels, that's what you're doing is you're trying to encourage connectivity. And then sometimes what I'm doing is I don't automate, like you talked about connecting with Pinterest to Instagram. Mm -hmm. What I do is I use them all organically and I cross post in a weird way. Yeah. Because I'm trying to get people to follow me on different platforms. I'll post like a video to YouTube, I hope to be able to do this soon, and I want my QR code for my Snapchat to pop up on the screen, why? Because they can pause the YouTube video if they're watching it on their laptop and they can follow me with their phone, make sense? But it's a very small niche thing. Massage Envy is not going to be using Snapchat anytime soon. That's my guess. The big companies are basically having their eggs eaten because they're dinosaurs. Their age is coming to an end because small mammals like me are putting out free content. Does it make sense? That's what you gotta do. Each platform is a little different. It'll continue to evolve. Any other questions? We need to get back to class. To the fun part. This is not fun, is it? Everybody's dead. They're just like, I hate, I hate social media. I hate Zark Zuckerberg. I don't care about Snapchat. <laughs> I, I don't currently use yeah. it because I do not take more clients. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't want to advertise yeah. myself. But when I open the spa, um, it will be. So here's what you do. You train your therapists to have their personal accounts and use that account to help build your business. But you have Possibly, to, but you have to use a degree of training to be able yes. to understand, here's the thing, but other local spas, do you hear this other local spas? She's gonna eat all your eggs, cause you're a dinosaur. <laughs> and when she comes along with her small mammal massage therapists, uh-huh, and when they're posting content, so here's the thing, they go in, do they check in on Yelp? Because you can get your clients, not, not just the clients, but you can get the, the, the people who work at your facility to come in and check in. How many of you checked in to this class today and said, Lauderstein, ready to tie it up? Because he, he advertised me. She advertised me. But here's the thing. They advertised them. Because somebody who follows him who is interested in time massage is more likely to ask him a month from now, Yo, I saw you took a time massage no, class? No, they already did. They were like, come back uh -huh. to me. Uh -huh. And that's how it works. What I see across the board is the new owners, they're not doing what I just mentioned. And I think that's going to shift. It's going to take a, 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 a sea change of sorts for that to happen. But I think that's what should happen. When I talk to like massage envy employees, I think they say that they can't do that. Like there's actual policies in place that don't allow them. And I'm like, mm hmm my age is coming. It's the age of the mammals. Are you ready? There was a tectonic shift. Yeah, the comment, oh, what's that? What's that burning through the sky? Because <laughs> you have to learn how to use it. Taco Bell has a Snapchat. Yeah. So uh, you guys have fun. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.